Hey everyone, this is Kyle here. I wanted to put together a series of videos that show some of the backing track techniques that I use in main stage and also with logic to hopefully help you uh, create a good workflow for you to use backing tracks in the music that you make. Uh, so with this video I wanted to show you uh, a technique I have for putting together quickly a list of songs in main stage that only have the click um, and have an intro vocal cue. So the scenario looks like this. You've got uh, an hour before your service starts and, and you realize that you want to put um, a click track in for all your songs so, so that it's a little tighter with the band and you also don't want to have to have the drummer count off songs or you don't want to have to vocally count them off. So you want to have an intro um, vocal cue. So what we can do is basically have two files. One is two measures of the click and we're going to cycle that over and over and the other file is an intro vocal cue and that one will be kind of a one shot um, so the method I'm going to show you here will allow us to just press play on the song uh, the song will have an individual tempo BPM and that will adjust these two files but we're only going to be working with these two files every song will reference them so let me show you what I mean I'm going to jump into logic now um, this is where I've created these two files Really, uh, all I'm looking for here is a click track, and I'm using the Klopfgeist plugin. Uh, I've punched in the MIDI notes I want for my subdivision. Sounds like this. The other thing I have is an Ultrabeat plugin that's housing my vocal cue samples. I put them all on a different MIDI note. Intro, two, three, four. And so this is the vocal cue that I want for every song. I want every song to say intro, two, three, four. That way the band can come in right on time and make it easy. Um, so I've got these two things. That's all I need. Um, again, I only need two measures here because we're going to cycle it in main stage. And finally, uh, we have one marker here. You can see I've called it cycled click. This is not necessary, but because it will bring over the marker name in my marker list, I put that in there so that I can see visually that this only has one marker and it's a cycled click. Um, so the final step, once you have these two tracks, is to go to File, Export All Tracks as Audio Files. And uh, we only have to do this once because every future main stage concert we do that wants to use this method can use uh, these same two files we're exporting now. So because of that, I've created uh, this 4.4 folder. Um, and in here I've already obviously done this, exported these two tracks so that for all 4-4 songs, again the time signature 4-4, in main stage I can simply reference this in the future. And uh, like you may have saw, I also have one for 3-4 and 6-8, uh, common, common time signatures for this kind of music. So we've got that, I'm going to close out a logic completely, I've been having problems with my computer crashing. <laughs> Awesome. So now we're looking at um, the template that I use uh, for music sets. And what I have it, right here is uh, playback plugins on the right that will be uh, housing these um, files that I've just exported. So I'm going to open up uh, the track dedicated to the click. Um, you can see I've already selected that um, click track file that I exported from Logic. Um, you can see I exported it as a CAF core audio. Um, and that is basically going to bring over the markers and also allow us to be able to manipulate the time using flex. Um, so I brought that over. Let me show you the other one as well. Here's the cue playback. Um, you can see I brought that one over. Uh, a quick note here, typically with the workflow I use, um, all the tracks will be synced together and they will also be all in the same group. Um, but as I'm about to demonstrate in a second, we want the cues this time to be on this blank group and the click to be on a separate group. Um, this is because we, when we click play here and we have it cycle, we don't want the cues to cycle every measure. We only want the click to cycle every measure. Um, so what you'll see is, click on the song. Intro, two, three, four. I forgive the uh, audio artifacts there. We're running pretty hot in the computer today. Um, but if you could, if you could hear it, uh, the click was cycling and it would keep going until I hit the uncycle button. But the cues uh, was more of a one shot. And the reason that happened is, again, because um, I have them both synced. 
Um, for this track, I hit the cycle button here inside the playback plugin. That's why when I when I hit play, this click track continued to cycle, and again would have continued until I either stopped it or pressed uh, the cycle button. But if you look here, again it's synced. Uh, this is not cycled. So what we're doing here is kind of mimicking a um, a one shot sample on the cue. So it's going once, whereas the um, the click track will will continue over and over. So once we have that, that's the bare bones. From there, you can do like um, Apple C. Apple V and uh, continue to make new songs and you can do this for every song assuming they're all in 4.4 the only thing you would need to do is click on your new song go to attributes and then change the tempo and if you didn't know the tempo you could even just tap it in 105 get it like that update it um, so what you would have then is a selection of songs all referencing the same two files um, the difference being it's going to play them back at obviously the BPM you specified. Uh, a quick note as well, on the, on the vocal cues here, um, it's going to be manipulating the time obviously, and as such it's going to be using the flex mode. And so I'd recommend for flex mode for the cues to select uh, polyphonic. This is going to be the most realistic vocal cue sound so it doesn't sound like a robot if it really slows down the vocal sample or really speeds it up. Um, you can leave the click at the default uh, polyphonic mode. Um, and then finally if you have obviously any songs in different time signatures you can use the same format uh, simply specifying the different time signature here. Likewise you can make sure to specify the, the same time signature here 3, 4, 6, 8 um, and it would be the same workflow other than that. You'd obviously be referencing two different um, CAF files because those files would need to have been created in 3, 4 or 6, 8. So again, the end result is a set list that we can use very or put together very quickly and that is very effective at keeping the band on track and helping us all come in together. So let me know if you guys have any questions on this set. Uh, if you have any questions on overall the workflow or the layout, feel free to check out some of the other videos that I have on there. They give a little more comprehensive um, explanation to uh, the entire setup that I have going to run backing tracks in main stage. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later.